Hello YouTube, welcome back to 802 Garage. It is a beautiful day out in Vermont and I am finally going to give a proper introduction to my 1997 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. Now I'm going to start with the good and then I'm going to talk about the bad and then I'm going to tell you my plans for this car. So first off, the good. So the first major good thing of course is the reason everyone is here, the legendary 4G63 engine. That is a turbocharged 2 liter unit from Mitsubishi. This engine was made famous of course by the overseas version of the Mitsubishi Evo and also by the Eclipse GSX and its compatriots the Plymouth Laser and the Eagle Talon TSI. You can see that my car has a large aftermarket front mount intercooler and piping. This car in stock form made 210 horsepower. I also talked to someone who apparently worked on the car and they said it has aluminum timing gears and an upgraded clutch as well as some other upgrades in the engine. Another thing I love about this car is the massive rear wing. It just screams 90s DSM and I really like it. It does have these aftermarket black taillights, but at least they're not the terrible chrome jobs that you saw so often on 90s cars and especially Mitsubishi models. These have LEDs, which makes them at least a little bit better than the average aftermarket taillight, I think. However, these terrible badges probably need to go. Another thing I personally like about the car is the factory Mitsubishi 16 inch wheels in silver. I think they fit the car well and they came with brand new snow tires when I bought it. There's one feature of this car I don't usually like but I particularly enjoy in this Eclipse and that's the leather interior. It's comfortable, it looks nice, it's pretty complete, it all matches well and overall I'm pleased to have it. This car also has a fairly tasteful aftermarket shift knob and shift boot as well as the factory leather steering wheel, which I'm pretty partial to. While it doesn't mean as much in a Vermont car, this car also isn't particularly high miles with only 120,000 on the clock. This car also has the GSX gauge pack, which means it features quite a bit of information, as well as even a boost gauge over there on the left side. This car also came equipped with a triple gauge pod for the A-pillar. It came with three gauges, including an oil pressure gauge and an air-fuel ratio gauge, which is particularly important for a turbocharged car like this one, and it's an expensive item. Another awesome thing about this car, which is rare in my experience of buying older vehicles, is that it came with a lot of awesome paperwork showing what's been done to the car, including this form showing that they paid $1,875 for the new engine. Ouch. This shows when the engine was shipped. This shows how much it costs to have the engine put into the car, as well as a lot of other work, including modifying the exhaust and an oil change, which is always a good sign. Another $1,600 spent on this vehicle. We have proof that the front left caliper was replaced, which is great. It seems that they put in a new alternator, which is also awesome. Plus the set of four brand new hand cooked tires, almost $400. So you can see that a lot of money was spent on this vehicle, which is great. And a lot of problem areas were already addressed. Oh, and did I mention it has the classic turbo bump? Overall, of course, one of the best things about this car is just the styling. I love 90s Japanese vehicles and DSM really nailed it with this one. The 2G Eclipse is one of my favorite cars from the period right up there with the Mitsubishi Evo and the 3000 GT. Now let's talk about the bad. I'm not sure if I should start with the awful, the pretty bad, or the eh, but I'm just going to dive right in. First of all, I've been talking to Jeff from Fully Spooled. Check out his channel and he says this is a really common problem with 2G DSMs especially, but I've got some bad rust in here. Unfortunately, the rear section of this rocker panel is very eaten away and it's gonna be a tough repair job. I also wanna show you the rust in the front strut towers, but unfortunately that leads me to the next bad. The driver's door handle is missing. Maybe it was a bad omen, but I ignored it. The second I got this car home, I tried to open the door to show a friend and the driver's door handle broke right off. So I need to replace that. Now that I climbed in the passenger side and popped the hood, I can show you just how bad it really is. Unfortunately, this is also a common problem with second generation Eclipse vehicles. I've been talking to Jacob from Rust Belt Garage who just bought a similar 2G Eclipse, except his is the front wheel drive model with the 420A and he plans to turbocharge it. His still has the same rust spots on it. Jacob and I are actually planning to do side by side builds of our red 2G Eclipses. So go check out his channel Rust Belt Garage for a similar intro. I'll post a link in my description as soon as it's up. And speaking of Jacob's Eclipse, it's kind of funny how many bad things our cars have in common. Not only are they rusting in the same spots, the rear rocker panels and the front strut towers, but we're also both missing radios. So that's another bad thing. I'm missing the radio and the front speakers are completely blown. The other really bad thing about this car is that I bought it in October of 2014. At that point, it was missing this window. While the car was sitting for sale, someone had smashed it to break in and steal the radio, subwoofer, and amplifier. None of which were supposed to come with the car anyways when I bought it. Unfortunately, because it sat so long missing that window, the interior got really moldy. This is just a tiny bit, but it was much, much worse. You can see me cleaning that up in my other video, Biohazard Interior Cleaning. 
You can see after my work it looks much better and I'm really loving this interior, but it still needs work. I did replace this window, fairly cheap, and it wasn't that hard of a job, but it was quite fiddly. I'll have a video of that up soon. Another part of this car that really needs work is obviously the paint and body. First of all, all these garish stickers probably need to go, and second, you can see that there's issues like peeling on the trim, tape residue, lots and lots of pollen like over here underneath the spoiler, and various scratches and dings. Most of it can be addressed, and I'm betting that after a thorough cleaning and some proper refurbishing, this paint job will look great for a car of its age. Another amp point about this car is these side view mirrors. I'm not really sure how I feel about them. They're sort of a fake carbon fiber print plastic, and while they look okay and I can admit they're kinda cool, I don't think they're my favorite and they're not in the best shape. As for the really bad about this car, of course, it's the fact that it's been sitting here for two and a half years. It does not currently run. The previous owner had a lot of work done to this car, but unfortunately, some mistakes were made. This is actually a replacement engine. I have all the paperwork saying how much it cost and where it came from in the mileage, and I'm pretty pleased with it. However, when the engine was installed, they converted it from a flex plate to a flywheel, and I believe they put in the wrong flywheel. If you get the flywheel for the front-wheel drive turbo version, it doesn't quite match up with the all-wheel drive starter and transmission. Therefore, this car doesn't start right now simply because the starter doesn't engage the flywheel. Before I go ahead and pull the entire transmission, I will try making sure that it has the correct starter, but I'm pretty confident that it needs the new flywheel. I did already buy an Exidy Racing flywheel for this vehicle, and I'm excited to put it in and get this thing back on the road. One more little bad thing, I am missing an air filter, which is the least of my problems, but I'm also missing the front bumper, which just doesn't make this car look fantastic. Fortunately, they're available fairly cheap, or I might be able to get one from a parts car. One last bad thing, while this car did come with pretty impressive brakes from the factory, it's been sitting so long that they're fairly rusty, as are most of the suspension components. There is some more rust underneath the car too, which I haven't been able to thoroughly check out, but I don't think it's bad enough to call it a total loss. Speaking of underneath the car, while some may not like it, I think it's good that it came with this aftermarket exhaust. It may look like a fart can, but it actually sounds rather quiet and pretty nice. Unfortunately though, the car did not come with the LSD, which disappointed me slightly, but it really shouldn't make a big difference for my goals. So what are my plans for this car? Well, I think it's what everybody else wants too. I want to hear it make stuttututu noises again. Which by the way is one of the things I'm most excited about. This car did make amazing blow off valve noises when it was running. So really what I have planned is a resto mod of sorts. I don't want to make this car a rice mobile, I just want to get it back up and running, properly tuned up, and on the road. I will put upgrade parts into it and try to make it more powerful as I can, but I don't have a ton of money to dump it into this project. I really just want to restore it to its former glory and have it going down the road making awesome turbo noises. My other plan is just to show you my work every step of the way, and I'm going to be working alongside Jacob from Rust Belt Garage to do our side-by-side -side builds of these 2G Eclipses. So please again check out his channel and mine, and we should both have regular updates of what we're doing to our cars. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this look at my 1997 Eclipse GSX project car. If you want to support me, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Please let me know if you like this style of video, I'm planning to do a similar introduction for my 1985 MR2 as well as for my daily driver and any other project cars I have. As always, I appreciate all the support I've gotten and I really hope you all enjoy watching me fix up this car and others for the summer. I can't wait to get behind the wheel of this car again. I would be lax not to mention one of the major features of this engine bay, a snack. Hey buddy. You can see I got an intercooled snake on this thing. Ooh, he's in my frame. He's in my frame. Alright, have, have fun in my frame, buddy.